J'accueille sur scène Amaury Grimbert, le président like de l'administration de l'OP3. to join me. Amaury is the chairman of the board and the co-creator of Frogan's Technology, as well as Julie Laurent, who is the uh, who is our legal. Alors comme vous le voyez, je manque déjà à tous mes devoirs puisque j'ai appelé Amaury avant. I called Amaury first. I should have called Julie first. Um, so, let me um, just take two minutes to set this up. I would like to project your slides. Bonsoir à tous et merci. In the meantime, good evening, everyone, and thank you for being here. We're very glad with Julie to uh, wrap up this fifth conference. At the very beginning of this uh, conference, uh, right around 2 o'clock, Philip presented uh, some of the objectives uh, of uh, OP3FT. Uh, once again, I would like to remind you that OP3FT is uh, it has a particular uh, structure, legal structure. It is a general interest non-for-profit organization. I think we've talked a lot today about the mission um, uh, of OP3FT and fragrance uh, technology. So once again, our mission is to organize for the promotion, protection, and progress of the fragrance technology. For the general interest, it's uh, the purpose is to develop an open standard, once again, so there are a lot of prerequisites, and uh, legally speaking, we need a very uh, stringent um, legal framework. We haven't really talked about the bylaws, which we have done before in previous conferences. So OP3FT was created in 2012 and uh, the bylaws uh, were drafted with Alexis Tamas and with Julie. And uh, the bylaws don't really have the bare minimum. We did more than the bare minimum. We have uh, an article called, Ar which is Article 5, which includes the works. It's a 10-page section, which includes the roadmap of uh, OP3 FT going forward. So this was back in 2012. When I read Article 5, so I can only urge you to um, read this uh, article. It's, um, it's a little long, but uh, you will see that this, uh, this roadmap is uh, very much a long-term roadmap. The project has objectives. And again, we have a clear uh, roadmap. OP3FT has 30 employees, approximately. And there, it is managed by a board. There are three administrators, Alain Martel, who is right here, Alexis Tamas, whom you've heard a lot this afternoon, and myself. We are the third administrators. Um, then we have Alain, who's the, uh, who is an expert in, admin, uh, in company administration. We meet on a very regular basis. In 2014, I believe we met 16 times. So, more than once a month. And this is a great way for us to, to make the right decisions inspired by what's happening out there. So, um, a final word on the governance. Since the, uh, the early days, we've set up a, a vigilance mechanism. Jérôme Delacroix is here, as well as Jean-Emmanuel, who before uh, becoming involved in knowledge sharing was um, 
sur, euh, dans, dans, dans cette équipe de vigilance uh, working on uh, the subject of vigilance uh, what does that mean it simply means that we need to make sure that what we do is 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 uh, complies with the bylaws and is in line with general the general interest so um, let's move on to the next slide This slide is very much in line with what was uh, discussed just uh, minutes ago during the roundtable. And um, hopefully this can inspire killer apps. We have permanent objectives um, as part of the Frogans project. I won't go through this slide. Let me just read the four titles. The first one. Um, is about balancing relations between Frogon's site publishers and end users. This is a permanent challenge, keeping this good balance between publishers and end users. And uh, as Cyril uh, was saying earlier, that sometimes In terms of privacy, we have to be very careful of the privacy of end users. Some end users, uh, you know, could do anything, um, could be uh, careless uh, regarding what they download and so on. I'm, I'm probably one of them. So having a technology that um, allows for that balanced relation is really important, especially with the Frogans technology. The first point uh, is the uh, is elaborating uh, specifications, implementations, and policies as a coherent whole. Today, you were uh, introduced the FSDL. We had uh, we have specifications for addresses, networks. There are essential components. And behind these technical specifications, of course, they have to be implemented. Um, it's not just about having them, they actually need to be implemented. And Julie and her uh, team with Thomas have uh, a lot of legal work to do, legal policies, and so on. So this uh, this is what uh, the um, OP3FT uh, efforts are around the year. Again, the ultimate objective is access to all. Moving on to uh, the uh, third permanent objective, top right. Our DNA is secure and simple. I didn't know that this is something that would be discussed during the roundtable. Cyril said that security is uh, is something that we really need to push. Looking back at the 2025 past years, security, simplicity, we think, really work side by side and are two essential components of uh, the Frogans technology. You know, sometimes simple things, stability, um, robustness, lasts and, uh, and, and will uh, and, 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 and respects all parties. Last but not least, fost fostering employment, innovation and economic development. We believe in all three. We are convinced at uh, OP3FT and the OP3FT board that with uh, the, the development of this technology and by making it available uh, at no charge, there will be new businesses, there will be new models, there will be new services, and hopefully this, will, this can create jobs not just at Frogrance, but outside of Frogrance, of course. So, these four permanent objectives um, we felt were um, important to give to you as a reminder. Julie, over to you. Next slide, please. Voilà, et effectivement, de voir d'où l'on vient. 
before handing over to Julie. This slide is not so much about uh, where we're going at this point, but also where we're coming from. So the activity report for 2014, why are we talking about it only now? Well, I guess because it's, it has become a tradition. The, the board of OP3FD approves, closes and, and approves uh, the, the previous year, the year before. The author our authority, supervising authority, is the prefect of the city of Paris. We, uh, being an endowment fund, we have to report to the prefect of Paris. So it needs to be uh, submitted before uh, the 30th of June. Sometimes we're behind schedule. But uh, and uh, so during the September uh, technology conference, which is this one, we can report back to the community and uh, share um, the OP3 uh, FT activities for the previous years. So once again, it is important to look back before 2012, as Philip said, said earlier this afternoon. Uh, initially with Alexis Camas, we created this uh, a, a company and it really came to uh, reality with uh, OP3FT. OP3FT is both the legal and operational framework of the organization. In 2013, we did a lot of work on addressing. Uh, as Julie is about to tell you, we did a lot of work with ICANN. The same thing for 2014. And this year, in 2015, we're talking a lot more about publishing, the publishing format. Again, the le cas ces dernières années addressing um, is, um, is not so much a priority uh, during our conferences. Julie, tell us about the three P's. Good evening. I'm going to give you a detailed overview of uh, OP3FT's activities in 2014. Um, let me just go back to the three P's of OP3FT. Next slide. Starting off with promotion. The main action, uh, the highlight of 2014, was the creation of the Progress Technology Conferences. Uh, this is one today. The very first one was held in uh, May, May the 26th and the 27th. The second one was in September. So this was, uh, this was a very important milestone with respect to uh, promotion. Organizing these public free of charge conferences, again, available both in French and in English, uh, including uh, streaming online. This uh, has made it possible for a lot of people to be with us uh, using technology. Uh, in 2014, we also created uh, Frogons Technology Workshops. Uh, workshops are work sessions on very specific topics. Typically, they last between anywhere between 60 to 90 minutes. The first ones we organized with Thomas were, uh, were the UDRPF. Well, these were legal workshops. They were organized in December. Some other promotion activities in 2014 were the presentation of the Frogans project uh, to international internet gatherings. gatherings. We attended several conferences. There's ICANN. ICANN 50 uh, was a very important event. It was held in London. We were able to talk to stakeholder groups, uh, uh, registrars, for example. Uh, the, 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 the registrars working group, I'm sorry. We were also uh, able to talk to GAC, which was, uh, again, a very important event for uh, the, the program project. Uh, we attended ICANN 51 in uh, Los Angeles. Again, this was a very important meeting. Benjamin Fisto was there. He presented one of our technical specifications. It was uh, one of the highlights, uh, clearly, for, uh, for us in 2014. Uh, with David, we went to INTA. And uh, we were able to talk to some brand holders. 
and uh, to the legal community as well. We uh, were part of the French Tech Tour in Japan with Jean-Emmanuel and Tom McKenzie. Both went to Tokyo and met with a number of large players in uh, addressing and uh, Japanese IT. We were able to present the Progans project and we got a lot of uh, very positive feedback. ICANN 49 also um, in Singapore, XML, Prague, as well as the IETF meeting. I believe this was in London as well. And this was an opportunity again to meet some uh, players of the ecosystem. It was uh, mainly about networking, meeting people, people who did not necessarily know us before and who hopefully are now with us. Hopefully they're listening to us this evening. So these were some of the big events in 2014. Really the... the, 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 the as part of the promotion of um, programs technology. Another important event was the, the launch of the new websites. We created a website dedicated to uh, conferences, conference.frogons.org. We also have one for, um, for the workshops. It's uh, workshop.frogons. Dot org. Then we have project.frogons.org. That website uh, is for the general public. It presents uh, or introduces the project, uh, the Frogons project, to the general product. Then we have two more technical sites. Uh, there is nick.frogons. I'll come back to it a little later. Uh, it's, a, it's very much about the technology. Um, and um, we obtained the extension at Dot Fragrance, and uh, then there is a great site, Get Dot Fragrance. Everybody, of course, used it today to download um, FSDL, uh, or the player, sorry, Fragrance player. And um, our uh, bylaws are also. Um, in the bylaws, it says that we have to create resources that can be used, practical resources available to all to better understand the project, understand some of the legal considerations of the project. So we publish a lot of practical resources either on frogans.org or fcr.frogans. So I can only encourage you to go and read these resources. We are doing our very best to make them simple, easy to understand. They're great learning material. The second P, the second P, protection. So, one of the, 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 the highlights, the big event in 2014 was the, was the UDRPF um, procedure. So you may not know, you may not be familiar with UDRPF. UDRPF stands for Uniform Dispute Resolution Policy for Frogans Addresses. For example, imagine I'm Coca-Cola Company. If somebody registers Coca-Cola Star, well, you can use this procedure, this the UR, the UDRPF procedure to recover or to have to to get that address back, the Coca-Cola um, back. So we signed two uh, uh, memoranda of, of understanding. Um, one uh, with Forum. Forum is a, a very large international arbitration center in the U.S. They manage all internet-related questions, domain names, but not only. And uh, since we've signed this protocol, they've also been working on Progans. And we have a, a memorandum of understanding with the ADNDRC, which is the Asian Domain Name Dispute Resolution Center. They have four centers across uh, 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 
Kuala Lumpur. Asia, Kuala Lumpur, Beijing, Hong Kong, and the fourth one is I forgot. So they manage all disputes um, in Asia. So signing uh, these agreements was very important. Um, Le lancement, on va dire, de nos, de nos deux grands partenariats. These today are, are, are big, two big legal partnerships uh, we have. We chose brand owners that uh, we have a system which is fully uh, protected. In terms of protection, as Amory was saying earlier, we have policies. We have this uh, a, a policy which was published in February 2015. Uh, I, I can't talk about it now which is the, 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 the Provence Technology User Policy. Um, we've worked on this a lot throughout 2014. Um, last but not least on this slide regarding the protection, um, our daily mission at OP3FT is to measure, uh, manage, I'm sorry, our endowment. So we have to manage the initial endowment. We have brands, patents, domain names, specs. All these have to be renewed. They have to be protected. So they need to be, uh, you know, carried out at the right time, the right place. Uh, this is keeping us very busy. And also managing the endowment is, means getting more endowments, increasing the endowments. As we've made progress, um, you know, uh, we have uh, we've received additional contributions uh, from external contributors. So we have to again think about how we're going to you know manage uh, rights associated to intellectual property. How do we protect our technology in a secure way for future users and so on? So this is keeping us very busy. Um, it's really a, 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 a daily endeavor. And that's uh, the end of my presentation. The last part of our mission is to develop the, pro the Frogans technology. So in 2014, we issued two major pub publications. We drafted and published two technical specifications covering the uh, Frogans address patterns. There was the EFAP. 1.0 in March and 1.1 in November, we made some corrections. That's the uh, technical specification that describes the International Frogan's address pattern. And then we also published the FACR technical specifications that goes, that goes more into details and it was presented during FTC 3 by Benjamin, if I'm not mistaken, it was an excellent, excellent presentation. So it's in this specification that you can find everything with regards to the uh, linguistic categories as uh, mentioned by uh, Philip. So what are the uh, letters which are authorized, those which are not, what are the conditions to consider that the characters converges with another one, all the technical specifications so that Frogan's addresses can work perfectly in the future. So these are the two specifications that describe these, these rules. The technical team showed their beautiful work with the Frogan's Plans for Developers uh, version. They, we started working on that obviously a while ago and in 2014 they worked a lot on the Frogan's Plan and, and on the software libraries. And last but not least, the uh, dot frogans TLD was introduced into the root zone of the internet. That's a partnership with IANA, which is the <coughs> regulator of a global internet and our technical operator for our registry, registrar. And this was uh, really a great moment for us, and that was back in April 2014. And now over to our chairman, 
he's going to talk about money. Okay, the accounts, it's going to be very quick because at this hour you're probably all tired. That's probably why we do that at the end of the day, by the way. So the uh, funding model of OP3FT, we're not sponsored by any large company. OP3FT, when it was set up, has delegated the function of addressing registry to interactive company, which is at the origin of the project. But that's quite anecdotal because, and that's a parallel with the web, by the way, because as for domain names, there are registries that manage the .com, so it's the very signed company in the US, and there are registrars that sell to people uh, the domain names. So we, our business model is based on the payment of a fee because, as I said, our fund is comprises rights that make it possible not to generate an income, a revenue, but to get the money from the endowment as an operating as a license to operate the registry of Frogan's addresses. So there is a contract between OP3FT and the operator of the central Frogan's registry. This is a delegation contract. It covers the rights and duties and we adapted it to Frogan's but it covers the rights and duties that VeriSign has vis-a-vis uh, -vis ICANN's for domain names and this contract actually is based on 15% of all monies cashed by the operator or paid to OP3FT. And if there is no sales, no selling of the Frogan's addresses, then there is a minimum guaranteed budget of 1.8 million. So I'm looking at the second bullet point, endowment revenues. That's the budget, the annual budget of OP3FT. What is important for us this year, and that's a management decision that the board of directors has made as of uh, mid-2014, we had an, accident, an, an excess in 2012 and in 2013, and our bylaws provide that OP3FT has no objective in capitalizing the excess monies it could make so that our bylaws say that we have an obligation to redistribute any excess we have to companies that would carry out a mission of general interest. So this we've not reached this point, but in the board of directors, we are thinking about the processes we could put in place so that we could redistribute the excess in money that we have if the um, project becomes uh, increasingly successful. So in, in 2014, we realized that we had to go beyond the budget of 1.8 million to reach the objectives as defined by our bylaws. So this year, in 2014, we have a deficit because you can't talk about a loss when you talk about the PL of a non profit organization. But there is a deficit. So we thought, well, instead of slowing down our operations, we need to speed them up. And in order to speed them up, we have, on the next page, we've used what the law allows us to do. We decided to ask permission to the Paris prefect to receive donations so we call for the generosity of the public and there is a prefect decree that was uh, signed in 2014 so that we can receive donations and we can 
optimize things for our donors because individual donors can get a tax refund in France, likewise for companies, by the way. So it's not true for uh, foreign individuals or companies, but it's true for French residents. And as we're all very busy with our jobs, we've only, it's only this year and only in August that we opened a site called donate.op3ft.org and we're launching a campaign to speed up the Frogans project, but this uh, closes the loop with the uh, objectives that we have. If we call for donation, it's not to support Frogans, because for us that, that was... that made no sense. For us, it's supporting employment and economic development, and we were talking about the value creation that could come out by using this open source technology. So making a donation is there to support innovation, job creation, and economic development through the Frogans project. And this is why we think that we are in line with general interest and this is what will attract people. So we are trying to speed up the Frogans project and the objective at the end of the day is to end up with a balanced budget because as of 2014 we are not in balance. It will be the same thing in 2015. So we will find more money through a call for donation. Uh, anything else, Julie? I don't think so. Okay, that's the 2015 overview. So, it's always weird for the board of directors to talk about the to talk about 2014 where we are approaching the end of 2015. But for us, the overview, we have a priority registration period for trademark holders that started in April 2015. And on that occasion, we ensured promotion with uh, uh, trademark holders and jurists. Amazon has registered two of its brands in, in the system as a pure player. Then, at the moment, I can't remember who was saying that, but it's still possible. It was Jinkit when we saw the prototype or the first alpha Frogan site, it's still possible to register a Frogan's net network of all types. It can be a geographical name or any name. And we have this priority registration period for entrepreneurs, for people who are anticipating business ideas. Then, in 2015, we had the number three Frogans conference in January, number four in June. STR came to share with us during our last conference. Uh, Paul Moke Petrus, whom we saw in picture, came to the, attended this conference as well. All the work from all the teams uh, are presented on a regular basis. Today, we were talking about FSDL and Julie had the congratulations of everyone for the legal team because technical specifications were issued and we want to congratulate the legal teams who did a tremendous work to allow us to show what we've showed today and I see very serious faces in the room because some people keep telling me there's still a lot to do. Uh, it's true but we have the appropriate resources to do so. So we'll continue working. We have a lot of pleasure working on the board with Alain and Alexi because the teams come and share their projects with us and it's part of the governance process of OP3FT. Is that all, Julie? Well, thank you. 
and see you for our next conference. Over to Jean-Emmanuel for his conclusion. Thank you so much, Julie. Thank you so much, Amori.